Welcome to episode 7 of my Kawasaki Z1900 engine restoration and in this video I'm going to show you how I made my special carburetor adjusting tool. I made my carburetor adjusting tool in the 1980s when I had my GPZ1100. It's just perfect for adjusting the throttle bodies and tuning the engine. It will also work on any set of carburetors that have an 8mm lock nut and slotted adjusting screw in the centre. So to make a carburetor adjusting tool you need a few basic items. So go up to my top shed to have a rummage. I'm looking for an M10 cap head bolt and here's one just perfect in my box of old bolts. I'll take a couple just in case. And I need a piece of tube and a piece of rod and a couple of bits of brass. The length of rod about 10 inches long needs to fit nicely inside the piece of tube. It doesn't matter if it's a bit loose and a couple of short lengths of brass, about 20 millimetres diameter. Back in the garage, all the bits on the bench, I look at the M10 cap head bolt. This is ideal because the hexagon inside is eight millimetres, so it fit an eight millimetre nut. The piece of tube will become the outer body, and one of the pieces of brass will be the little lever. The lever could be made from steel, but I like working with brass. The outer tube is already around 10 inches long, so that's just perfect. So I need to put it in my lathe to clean up this end where it's been rough sawn. I'll grip the piece of tube in my three-jaw chuck and put a drop of ZX1 extra lube on the end and the cutting tool. This is an excellent cutting oil. The piece of tube that I found is actually stainless steel, just has the added bonus that it won't rust. With the tube cut off the length, I double check it on my Z900 that it's going to be long enough, and it is, so I'm really pleased with that. The next thing I'm going to do is make the 8mm socket from the M10 cap head bolt. I grip the cap head bolt in a 3 jaw chuck so I can turn the head down so it's slightly smaller. I first reduce the length slightly and face off the front face so it's got a nice sharp edge. With the front face machine, I use an Allen key to deburr. I now start skimming the diameter, reducing it down a bit at a time until it's just bigger than the hexagon inside. This needs to be as small as possible so it can fit down between carburetor bodies. There we go, that'll do just nicely. So now I can remove it from the chuck and cut it off to length. I grip the bolt in my vise and use my hacksaw to cut it off to length. It's quite hard going because these cap head bolts are very tough. With the end piece removed, I can now turn it around and put it back in my chuck and face it off to length. With the end face faced off, I can now drill a hole in the centre. I first use my centre drill to ensure that it's in the centre nicely and applying a bit of oil for a smooth cutting. With the whole centre drilled, I now remove it and replace it with a drill that's slightly smaller than the piece of rod I chose. With the hole drilled, 
The next thing I do is machine the outside diameter so it's a nice sliding fit inside the piece of tube. There we go, that fits just perfect. The next thing I need to do is machine down the diameter of the piece of rod on the end so it slides nicely inside the socket for the length of the socket. This will become the screwdriver part. I grip the central rod in a three-jaw chuck and start machining down the diameter so it's a nice sliding fit inside the socket. As I'm machining the internal rod, I realise it's really tough material, probably some EN16T I had left over from a previous project. But this will make a perfect screwdriver blade. I further reduce the diameter just at the tip so that when I file the blade, it's a bit thinner than it needs to be so it fits down inside the nut. This will all become apparent later on. I grip the rod vertically in my vise and start filing the flats for the screwdriver a little bit each side at a time by eye. I'm using my square file because it hasn't seen much use and was really sharp. Well that took a bit longer than I thought, that material was really tough, but here's the finished screwdriver blade. It now fits down inside the socket, and that's basically the end finished. So now I can do a dry assembly of the three parts. I can put the socket into the outer tube, put the inner tube inside until it rests up against the socket, and it all looks good, I'm really pleased with that. I then cut the inner rod with my hacksaw until it's about 10 millimeters longer than the outer rod. So the next thing to do is make the brass adjusting knob. So I'll put a piece of brass in my lathe and start machining it down to a diameter. It doesn't really matter what diameter, just one that looks right. I then swap the cutting tool for a diamond knurling tool. This is basically two rollers with cross hatchings on them and when you push them against the surface of the brass it produces a nice diamond nail. After a few minutes a nicely formed diamond nail is produced. I then drill a hole in the centre very slightly smaller than the diamond to the rod because this will be a tap on fit. I then part it off to length using my parting blade. I then grip the central rod in my vise and hammer on the nailed knob until it's flush with the end. It's quite a tight fit, but that's a good thing. There's a nice smell coming from the kitchen, so I go to investigate and Tracy's been making more cupcakes and these are apricot cupcakes. They look really nice, I can't wait to try one. But I've been told they're too hot and I'm not allowed to touch them, but I take one anyway and take it out into the garage. It definitely is a bit too hot to eat, but I'll leave it there to cool down for a little bit while I have a nice cup of tea. After a short while, it's cooled down just perfect to eat, so I have to eat it, with my cup of tea of course. I wonder if Tracy ever notices that I actually take one from the kitchen, because she never says. The next thing I'm going to do is join the socket to the outer tube using my silver solder rods. These are special flux coated ones and work really well. I grip the outer tube in my vise, then warm up the end with the blowtorch until it glows to a nice cherry red. Then you can melt the silver solder onto the surface, joining the two components together. The silver solder gets sucked into all the gaps by capillary action, making a very strong joint. After it's cooled in air for a short while, I quench it in water to cool it right down, being careful not to use my tea. I can then place it back in the chuck, clean it up with some sandpaper to make it really smooth and nice. 
finishing off with some Apronet cloth for that perfect sheen. A quick trial assembly in the inner rod fits nice and smooth inside the outer rod still, which is a good thing. This means that no silver solders run down inside causing a blockage. I'm now going to silver solder a short stubby piece of brass onto the end of the tube to act as a handle. This piece was already machined laying around from a previous job, so I first put some silver solder on one end of the brass piece. Then I'll silver solder onto the tube, then warm them both up together to join them together. This is because I've only got two hands, and you really need three to do this job. I can now offer up the brass piece to the stainless steel tube, holding it in place with pliers, or I gently warm it with a blowtorch until it melts together. I know when it's safe to let go with the pliers, because you can see the crystals form on the surface of the braze. So once this, this, this is done, I can remove it from the vise, quench it in my quenching water, not my tea. I then give it a good clean and a polish with some Abronet cloth until it's all shiny. There we go, I'm really pleased with that. So now I can put the inner rod in and see how it all fits together. I slide the inner rod in, but it's actually a little bit loose, so I made this little bush, which has a nice press fit into the, into the outer tube. And this will stop the rod from rattling around at one end. It's fully supported at the other end where it goes into the socket. Well, there we go, that fits really nice now. It's basically finished and you could actually use it as it is quite nicely. But what I like to do is harden and temper the screwdriver blade to make it more durable. And to do this, you first warm it up with your blowtorch, take it up to a cherry red, about the same colour as Charlie Wood's face when he's had a couple of whiskies, and then drop it in water. This will harden the tip, so now we have to temper it to make it tough. To temper the blade, I first polish it back to a shiny surface. Then heat it up with my blowtorch until it goes to a straw brown. Then re-quench in water. Well, that's it basically finished now so i hope this video has given you an insight on how i made this tool and hopefully to inspire you to make your own because they're really useful to have in the garage and mine fits perfectly on the rack with my other spanners thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it and the hedgehogs are still coming every night for their food even though we're getting near the winter and they should be hibernating but anyway i'll see you all soon one of the hedgehogs goes into one of the feeding stations has a little sniff and comes straight out and goes across another one Really strange.